morning. My name is Veronika Wienerska and together with my friend uh, Łukasz Mishk, who is sitting here in this room, uh, we would like to share with you our experiences from introducing mobile solutions in the documentation process for the purpose of conducting a large-scale excavation in Paphos, Cyprus. Uh, at the beginning, I will introduce you to the essence of the uh, Paphos Agora project and I will try to briefly discuss the main places in which our work is uh, currently focused. The next item in my speech will be the presentation of the documentation methodology developed so far, which we use during the research. I will try here to acquaint you with the individual stages of work, the equipment and software that we use for this purpose. Right after that, I will go to the main part that is using the mobile GIS as part of our work. Here I will answer such, a, uh, such questions as uh, why are we trying to introduce mobile JS to the tools we use, what was the reason for choosing the survey 1 to 3 for ArcGIS software. Later I will present the next stages of implementing the application. From preparatory work through consultation and field, field use to preliminary data processing. I would like to focus here on the problems we have encountered which could be avoided with more time and equipment. Uh, in conclusion, I will discuss the results that we have achieved so far and present our goals for the future. Uh, Paphos Agora project research led by Professor Evdoxia papuci Władyka from uh, 2011 are concentrated within the archaeological park in Paphos on the southwest coast of Cyprus. They have a large-scale character and the main work focus on the agora of the ancient city of Paphos. So far, six trenches have been opened in this area where remains of many architectural buildings have been unveiled. It should be added here that the stratigraphic system in these places is extremely complicated, as a result of which we get a very large number of subsequent layers. The aim of the conducted research is an attempt to reconstruct the city's economic life with particular emphasis on the role of Agora. Initially, the research focused on the main public square of the city. From 2015, the Paphos Agora project has been significant, significantly expanded. The whole area of Paphos Archaeological Park was in the orbit of research interest. A wide spectrum of research tools has been used to try to capture the economic infrastructure. Thanks to the use of, uh, among other, geophysical methods, as well as aerial and satellite images, new places were selected where in 2017 trial trenches were established. I think it is worth emphasizing here that during this season, excavations were, were carried out simultaneously in six, seven places at once with the same amount of equipment as usual, which forced discipline in the organization of work, which was sometimes quite a challenge. The excavation campaign usually takes place once a year during the holiday season and lasts from four to seven weeks. Due to the fact that the project is interdisciplinary, it is attended by specialists from various fields, architects, surveyors, photographers, geologists, etc as well as students and volunteers of various levels of initiation into archaeological mystery. As part of student internships, they can gain a lot of knowledge about the nature of research in the Mediterranean region and became acquainted with the methodology <coughs> of documentation work, both in the field and later in the development of the acquired material. In the field, the documentation is carried out according to the adapted scheme. After pure determination of the context, its measurement is performed using a, tot a total station or GPS, thanks to which we obtain its position in the coordinate system adapted for the local position. Next, a paper context, context card is inserted in which all the information regarding the given layer is to be targeted. Each context is also documented using photogrammetry and acquired images are processed in the Agisoft Photoscan software. If everything is okay, the whole process is repeated from scratch. Otherwise, if the pictures are of poor quality, 
or if there are holes in the model, you have to retake the picture. All data collected in the field are then sent to our database called the Archaeological and Archaeometric Information System for Paphos Agora project. This system is created using the ArcGIS software, which we use as a side license for education made available to the Jagiellonian University. It is a collection of all the information obtained from the individual team members, such as vector layers regarding context and special finds, Photogra pho photogrammetry models in the form of multi-patch layer, as well as raster images, aerial photographs, satellite images, orthophotos, and tabular data in the form of inventories, for example, ceramic, glass, and terracotta. We should also add architectural sketches, result of geophysical and geological surveys, conservation documentation, etc. The variety of this data often requires the aerial conversion to formats supported by ArcGIS, which sometimes lead to the loss of some information. One of the simplest examples of such a situation is rewriting data from paper context tabs directly to the database or indirectly to Excel or Access. This process is not only very time consuming, but also causes the creation of various types of errors illegible writing, distortion of words, incompatibility with the previously adapted scan, etc. In order to speed up the documentation process at the station and eliminate the data rewriting stage, we decided to try the possibilities of mobile applications. The basic function of the tool that we started to look for is mobility, the possibility of using the program in the field, simplicity of use, easy access to the data obtained, primary concer concern here with the opportunity to share the obtained information to a wider group of people at any time and place. We also wanted, as I mentioned earlier, to shorten the time needed for documentation and in particular to eliminate the step of rewriting data from paper cards to tab tablets and be <coughs> able to later add data to the whole database without changing the format. The tool we selected for testing was the Survey123 for ArcGIS application. In the process of introducing a new tool, in this case the application, you can distinguish three basic stages for use. Preparing application, using application and data processing. <coughs> After choosing a tool that ultimately was to help us work with with data in the field, we had to prepare it properly. The survey 1 to 3 for ArcGIS application can be downloaded from the S3 website. We can choose between two versions of the application for mobile devices or for a desktop computer. Apart from that, there is a wizard to create personalized surveys and a da data entry tool. The Survey123 application is nothing more than a collection of forms that can be easily filled in the field using any mobile device. The information is first stored in the memory of the device and then, when connected to the internet, it can be sent to the server. To gain access to the application itself and to the server, you must have an active account on ArcGIS Online and an invitation from the admin, the person who cr creates the questionnaire, which allows you to add an optionally edit data in a specific form. To create a form dedicated to our work, meaning electronic context card, we use Survey123 Connect for ArcGIS. This application allows you to build a proper survey from scratch by selecting the right functions, ending with defining an eye-friendly display style. It is worth noting that there is also the opportunity to work on the form directly on the website without the need to download a program to your, to your computer. We start the creation of the survey by defining the type of project. We have two to choose from, basic or advanced. Assign the, the title and clicking the create survey button. There is also an option to use ready-made templates that have been prepared by other users. This is a great learning base. We will find there not only the basic capabilities of this software, but also unusual solution that can often be useful. 
The survey consists of two parts, a graphical interface on which the user will work and the form XLS where the correct data entry scheme is created. Let's move to the worksheet. It uh, consists of four tabs, survey, choice, choices, settings, and types. The first one has a table with a number of headers. This is where the database part is built. In individual columns, you can put information on the type of data entered, define their name, impose certain restrictions or requirements or specific functions. In the next, there are options for selection. If you have previously selected a drop-down list, this is where we define its individual elements. Next is the Properties tab. For example, it is possible to change the display of the name of particular records. The last one describes all available options that can be used by filling in individual fields. The appearance of the graphic part depends on the previously defined options in the Survey tab, the Appearance column. The choice of field list appearance allows you to divide the whole form into several tabs, which is much more readable and makes it easier to enter data later. After preparing the form and making it available on the server, the next step was to present the application options to all interested, interested persons who were to use it in the field. A short meeting was organized during which the possibilities of the application and uh, hardware capabilities were tested the, uh, and interface was familiarized with. At this point, it should be noted that the project unfortunately does not have equipment that could be used in the field to fill out forms, tablet or smartphone, so every system user had to use private equipment for this purpose. At the meet a meeting, there were also the first comments regarding the data structure. For example, the possibility of choosing more responses in the case of the color and composition of the layer, and the interface, adaptation of the fonts uh, and colors, which allowed quick corrections. The first version of the electronic context card was ready to be tested. We started introducing the application for use in the field in the 2017 season. Due to the fact that we have just tested its capabilities and for greater, greater security against the data loss, we have decided not to give up paper context cards. As I mentioned before, every system user used his private equipment. Usually it was a smartphone. A large variety of <coughs> devices sometimes resulted in hardware errors such as suspending the questionnaire or the lack of the possibility of filling in the field that was usually easily solved. In the field, during use of the application, unfortunately, also the bigger problems appeared. It turned out that some functions have certain limitations. For example, to create a context sketch, the field has the following parameters. Type image, appearance signature, which in the graphical user interface appeared as a small window for signature but we prepared them with a view to making a simple sketch of the layer's location. Unfortunately, the window was too small and it could not be done. Uh, you could still use this option to take a picture. It should be noted here that we use software version 2.2. Currently, the sketches option is now available from version 2.4. In the area, previously unnoticed shortcomings came to light. Incorrectly defined field values, I mean the situation when the value of the field after consultation was limited and during the research it was necessary to <coughs> add a record that went beyond that boundary. It is possible to add such changes, however, in aerial versions of Survey123 for ArcGIS, such an update involves the possibility of losing information previously stored on the server. That's why when we decided to introduce some new features in the form, we created its new version. Let's go now to analyzing the obtained data. Data collected on an internet server can be analyzed directly on the web or download to a computer disk in the format chosen by us. Directly on the server, we have access to view data in various visibility settings. We can also config configure your own printout form and present our data on it in the form of charts, graphs, or maps. In the current beta version, you can also generate a report template. 
Often, a paper copy of the documentation is necessary for formal purposes. This function, which is still being refined, enables the preparation of such uh, form and printing of information on records selected by us. Returning to the question of downloading data, due to the fact that in our survey there were additional repetitions and attachments, we use the geodatabase format where apart from the layer itself, we also have relations. As I mentioned earlier, we have made changes to our surveys a few times, which is why we finally had several versions that needed to be combined. It would have been a big problem before, but fortunately from, from version 10.5, ArcGIS make it easy to do this. The problem was only the proper ma matching of the combined tables. The structure had to be mutually uh, compatible. In several cases, you had to, for example, eliminate domains assigned to a given layer. Differences in domains blocked the merging process. All information collected through surveys was then sent to the GEO database, where data from the entire 2017 season was collected. Data obtained through the use of Survey123 for ArcGIS can be combined with vector drawings of layers or inventories of various types of monuments using the join function and used later during cabinet work. <coughs> the results of our test can be divided into two categories, positive and negative. Let's start with the pluses. First of all, the previous preparation of the application allowed for the appropriate categorization of data and thus limited the entry of authorized values by users, which later significantly affected the easier and more efficient data processing. After that, the electronic form and data entered into it are more legible and permanent. In addition, the data can be easily downloaded later from the server and combined with the rest of the collected information. All interest project employees can use this data from anywhere, the only condition that must be met are grading access by the admin and access to the internet. Of course, the big advantage is also the possibility of using the application on various mobile devices. Unfortunately, there are cons. We have not been able to shorten the time needed to enter data, which it is probably the reason for the maintenance of paper reforms, as well as hardware limitation. The effect of this is also the subsequent filling in of electronic forms, which delay the data to the server. We need to mention here that the problem related to the invulnerability of the structure of the created database, often during field documentation. New categories of example um, special find appear or the description previously not included. Of course, you can always save uh, your, yourself by adding a different field, but again, it generates new problems and creates a wicket for previously blocked operation. A big problem is also the risk of losing data if we would like to update the survey. In summary, mobile GIS is quite a good solution for wide-scale surveys, but only if the entire da data collection process is proper properly prepared and above all has the right equipment. No internet in the field, the use of personal telephones instead of expeditionary equipment are the main shortcomings which should be measured. The ideal solution would be to have tablets that, thanks to the combination with the total station, would allow you to download data in real time and make a sketch in the field and then immediately fill the database in the same program. But maybe we can do it in the future. Thank you for your attention.